Hi everyone, Gigi from the RBA. In this video we're going to talk about measuring economic variables. So I want to talk about some of the different methods that economists and statisticians use to measure economic variables, including gross domestic product, or GDP. These methods are also used to measure many other variables in economics, such as interest rates, wages, or investment. We call these measures nominal and real measures. Now, at first, this language can be confusing. What does nominal mean? And if we're not looking at a real measure, does that mean that instead we're looking at a fake measure? Let's translate these words into simpler language. A nominal measure of something is its value at a point in time, whereas a real measure of something is its volume at a point in time. The relationship between value and volume is that value equals volume times by price. Or, if we replace the names, that a nominal measure equals the real measure times by the price. If we rearrange this relationship, we get that a real measure equals a nominal measure divided by its price. This means that you can think of a real measure as the nominal measure that takes out the effect of prices. Let's understand this more by using a simple example. Imagine that the economy consists of five apples only. Imagine also that it's currently 2015 and that an apple costs $1. So the size of our economy measured in value terms in 2015 is $5. So the volume of apples multiplied by their price. The size of our economy in volume terms is 5 apples. Let's fast forward now to 2020. Say our apple economy has grown, so it now consists of 6 apples. Apples have also become more expensive, so they now cost $1.10 instead of $1. How has the size of our economy changed? Well, in value terms, the size of our economy is now $6.60, and in volume terms, the size of the economy is 6 apples. Let's use these numbers to calculate the growth of the economy between 2015 and 2020. So in growth terms, nominal growth, which is the percentage change in values, would be 32%. And real growth, or the percentage change in volumes, would be 20%. These two numbers are quite different, and nominal growth is higher than real growth. This is because prices have also increased between 2015 and 2020, and this increase is included in nominal growth. Something I want to note here is the units that we use to measure the size of our Apple economy. For values, or our nominal measure, we use dollars as the units. But for volumes, or our real measure, the units that we used was apples. This was fine because our economy consisted of only one good, apples. But what would we do if we added oranges to our economy? Five apples isn't the same as five oranges. How would we measure the size of the economy in volumes now? Well, what we need is a common unit of measurement for apples and oranges. The common unit that we're going to use is dollars. Most things are able to be measured in terms of money. And in fact, that's why we have money in the first place, so we can compare the values of different things. But if volumes are measured in dollar terms, how do we account for the change in prices, which we want to leave out of our measure of volumes? Well, basically, what we do is to pick a price at a point in pick prices at a point in time and keep them the same when we're measuring volumes. That way, we can still see the size of the economy in dollar terms, but the change in prices is excluded. If we go back to our previous example, when we're calculating real growth, we would calculate the value of the apples in 2015 and 2020, but we would only use one price. In this instance, the 2015 prices. So in volume terms, the size of the economy in 2015 would be the same, $5, but in 2020, the size of the economy is now $6, so six apples times a dollar. This is because we're only allowing the volume of apples to change, not the price. Notice this gives us the same real growth as when we used apples as our unit of measurement. Now it would be easy to add oranges to our economy, but also bananas and pineapples and anything else you can think of, and calculate its size because we have a consistent unit of measurement across all our goods. Of course, in reality, an economy is made up of thousands and even millions of goods and services. And although also goods and services can change over time, so an apple in 2015 is the same as an apple in 2020, but a smartphone in 2015 is not the same as a smartphone in 2020 because newer smartphones are capable of doing much more than older ones. 
As a result, when we calculate the size of the economy in the real world, uh, it's, it's much more complex than in the simple example we've looked at here. But the general idea is the same. I'll leave it there. In the description, there's a link to the economic growth explainer, which talks about the content in this video. And there's also some related videos there as well. See you next time.